So Kurt and I were engaged April of 2019. You make me the happiest guy to marry me. Oh my God. But of course, 2020 happened and everything took a pause. Oh. So beautiful there. You guys, I think I found the dress. guys how's it going welcome to another video i find intros so awkward sometimes because i only vlog like once or twice a month so i feel like i sometimes i forget how to talk to a camera and i just need like a five minute warm-up or something but hello welcome back so i think where i left off in the last vlog is uh me revamping the entryway area all the furniture came the rug came and i vlogged like a little time lapse of us putting it together so you can see a before and after here's a little outfit of the day i normally don't do this but today I just felt so cozy this morning was so cloudy and not sunny at all the Sun just came out it's been so cold in LA so I just wanted to be cozy and so I just got the sweater from Urban Outfitters a while ago tops from Randy Melville these socks are my favorite they're from Barnes & Noble it's my favorite place to get cozy reading socks and they just are so handy in the winter and then the leggings are from Lululemon these are the aligned ones they're so comfortable and so fitting. I literally wear these every day. I know Lululemon leggings are a bit pricey, but I personally find them such a great investment because I literally wear them every day, so I make good use out of it. Okay, so wedding stuff. It's been a while. Sometimes I forget I'm even planning a wedding because it was just not a thing on our minds for a whole year. So Kurt and I were engaged April of 2019, almost two years ago. It's insane how time flies. We were going to have our wedding on November of 2020, but of course, 2020 happened and everything took a pause. Everything was so up in the air. I just felt like there was no point in planning or committing to anything. So by July, everyone was canceling their weddings coming up and it was pretty clear that we were gonna have to push back we also decided even if we could have an event gathering of more than 50 people We also were keeping our older relatives in mind And we didn't want to put them in the awkward position of saying no to attending our wedding if they didn't feel comfortable So we made the decision to postpone the wedding to fall of this year fingers crossed by then a lot of people would be vaccinated and we can have a good time. So last month in the spirit of January and new beginnings, I finally put myself back into wedding planning mode. It's still so weird planning an event that seems so far away. I feel like I needed some extra motivation to convince my brain like it's happening, it's real, you need to start planning. So I actually made a countdown formula on my Notion. So it basically shows me visually a countdown of how many months and how many days I have left before our wedding date. So seeing that visually really gave me the push to get going. Like real talk, Kurt and I were saying a wedding is kind of like a music video shoot, which we do all the time. It's just like an event where you need to think about cameras and lighting and logistics. And most of the time, we don't really even plan for a video until three, four days beforehand tops. I found the ultimate wedding checklist, like everything you need to think about and do before the wedding. And it's great to have some sort of like guideline to start me off because I'm bound to forget something. And the checklists have things broken down by month. So I know by the end of February, I should have a photographer and a wedding dress. So to catch you guys up, what I've done so far is I've made a Pinterest board on some inspos and just get a general idea of what I want in terms of like tables and decorations. Our wedding is going to be in a garden essentially. So I'm looking for anything along the lines of like rustic. I'll go ahead and pop some some examples I was thinking of. I feel like some candles on the table would be nice. So both the ceremony and reception will be outdoors. I just want it to be like a garden themed wedding. This month I want to confirm our photographer. We do have one in mind and we are meeting with him on a Google meeting just to get a feel and talk about what shots we want. And yeah, just, just overall like 
help meet him because I read that it's a good idea to kind of at least have some sort of interaction with your photographer before you decide to hire him or her. And lastly, I made an appointment last week to try on my dress again. Guys, I went wedding dress shopping literally a year ago, so I feel like I forget what the dress even looks like in person and it's such a big purchase that it felt weird to just order it online. So yeah, I made an appointment to try it on again. Plus, my maid of honor has not seen this particular dress, so she's also coming with me tomorrow and yeah, I'll get to capture her reaction. Hello, good morning. It is about 10.30 right now and I'm about to head out to go try on some more wedding dresses. If I say yes to a dress today, this may be the last time I'm trying on wedding dresses, which is so insane to think about. But I want to document every step along the way because it's such an exciting time. I'm excited. I haven't gone dress shopping in over a year and I honestly don't even remember how the dress set I think I'm gonna go with looked on me. So I'm really glad I'm doing this. I also saw two other dresses online that I want to try on. So who knows? I'm may even end up buying a completely different dress. I have my maid of honor here. Hi, hi. Her name's Jen. She's amazing. She's here to try on dresses with me. And we're just grabbing a coffee now. And yeah, we're gonna possibly say yes to the dress today. Yeah. And if it looks hideous, you have to tell me. No. no. What? You should. So because we only had an hour, I wanted to be efficient with my time and decided to try the one that caught my eye the most first. And little did I know how much I love this one. I'm blurring it out because this may be the one, but I can't wait to share with you guys. And here is Jen's reaction. That's so beautiful there. So the second dress I tried on was a size 14, which was a mere few sizes too big for me. <laughs> Can you hold it for me? Yes, I'll hold it. I picked this one because I've been really into off the shoulder long sleeves lately, and I felt like it reminded me of a chitin, you know, something a Greek goddess would wear. I loved how flowy it was, and I loved the neckline on the top, but it just didn't really feel like the wedding dress for me. <laughs> so, the third dress I tried on just for fun. I recently watched the thriller movie Ready or Not and the main character was wearing this beautiful laced long sleeve wedding dress and it looked so good on her and I wanted to just try the style on myself um, but it was not for me. So this next one was so so beautiful. It gave me Greek goddess wedding dress vibes, something I've been really into lately. I loved the detailing on the top and the skirt is pretty simple from there. I loved the blush undertone. Overall, it was very beautiful, but it didn't beat my first choice for me. This next one, I tried on because I loved the detailing in the back. I loved the low V-cut in the back, and I loved the floral detailing on the straps. But having tried a number of wedding dresses on myself at this time, I prefer a dress with a blush undertone as opposed to an ivory color. You guys, I think I found the dress. I did not see it coming. In fact, I remember seeing it online and thinking it looked kind of too flowy on the model. And when I tried it on, I just fell in love with it. I loved the one that was my top choice last year as well, but this one just stood out. It felt like my wedding dress. My maid of honor also agreed and it just it fit with the theme of her wedding and it has a blush undertone. It looked glam, but not too much. I did say yes to the dress. It's kind of anticlimactic because I'm going to order online because they didn't have my size. So that's the update and you guys will see it. Okay, now let's catch you guys up on the entryway. I initially attempted to unbox it myself and quickly realized it was a two-person job.
themselves as little stools. We use these for shoots all the time. And although it's very practical in the living room area, it just didn't go with the new bench we had. So we decided to go with a bench instead of the table. We just moved the speakers. This one is perfect. I love that it's white with like a little bit of a wood accent to it. So it kind of gives that rustic look. And these actually pull out. So extra storage space for like my purse and all that stuff. Also, we got these oxen from Amazon for Chinese New Year. We had a couple music videos that were kind of around Chinese New Year. So we wanted some decorations and look how cute these guys are. The only downside is we have absolutely no use for them for the next 12 years, but these guys can stay for now because they can keep the koala company. And this rug is from the same place. I got these both from Birch Lane and I just think it's the perfect shade because ideally I can sit on this bench when I put my shoes on. So we don't want it to get too dirty too fast. I just moved this plant and the plant stand up from our guest room. I just wanted to put a little bit of greenery next to this. I feel like it really brightens up the room. And here's where I move the table and the speaker along with it. We just couldn't get rid of the table because it just fits so perfectly over the speaker. And now we can put our laptop on top of it when we do playback for shoots. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. 